Hi, this is Everett with Livable Vans. This is our new 2022 Ford Transit High Roof Extended All-Wheel Drive 350. Um, we're building her out right now. Uh, we're making these videos to show you our build process from beginning to end, uh, kind of what's behind the walls. Uh, a lot of these videos to show you the final product, uh, but we want to show you the quality and care we put into them as we build them. So if you're a first time van builder, maybe there's some tips. And if you're a potential client, you can see the work we put into them um, from start to finish. And here we are at the beginning of the build with our van currently looking like this. The plan is to make her into a similar version of our previous build that you can see here. So we'll start on the outside. Uh, one of the first things we do is add the windows. Um, and you can see here we've added a CR Lawrence uh, passenger sliding door window and you can open this up to vent and also in the back there we have a, uh, a bunk window that's like a half slider you can open those up also and it's got a screen inside to uh, get air in the van so if you're a first-time van builder uh, I know it's super stressful to cut these big holes in your van to put in the windows um, my recommendation is uh, obviously take your time uh, measure like a thousand times uh, get OCD with that and uh, use a good jigsaw blade and switch them out don't try to use one blade for like three or four windows like um, it's always good to have a fresh blade and uh, when I'm cutting I'll cut say eight ten inches and then I'll go stop and I'll tape that down it just keeps the metal stable if you just cut away it'll start to flap and it'll mess you up so take your time cut it out and after you're done with that, you want the worst thing you can have is an opening that's too big. You'd rather have it too small because then you can just take uh, what I use is a, like a, uh, a flap wheel on a grinder, which is kind of like sandpaper for metal. And then you just slowly will open it up because you want it to be as tight as possible. You don't want to, there's no way to reverse it. So just take your time. You can open that up and when it's done, you deburr it. You paint some rust-oleum on it and just put them in and screw them in and they're good to go. A tip that I use when cutting out the small bunk window in the back is I get a thin piece of metal to put behind these two ribs that you need to remove. Since you have to cut the ribs a bit higher and a bit lower than the window opening so the internal ring can be attached, I place this metal behind them just to prevent me from accidentally cutting the van wall. And once I have the bottom part of the rib cut, I actually tape a pencil under the rib to get it even a little further away from the exterior wall. And after these ribs are cut, I take my template and I get it exactly where I want the window to be. And then I drill two holes through the template and the side of the van and place a drill bit in each hole and take the template to the outside of the van, place the drill bits through the holes, giving me the exact location for the window. Then I cut it, clean it, paint it, and install the window. When we bought this van, it didn't have windows in the back. And for us, when we were traveling, we really enjoyed having these windows. So we installed these. These are Van Direct windows. Um, and we really like them. We like the tints on them. And when you install them, they come with this trim that goes around the metal. And for us, I, I like it more than the factory windows. It looks a little more finished. So to talk about the flooring a little bit, um, when we start out, we use Kill Mat, um, which is a sound deadening product. On top of that, we'll start to build out the uh, furring strips, kind of like a subfloor. So then we fill in the grooves with insulation so the floor is level. Then we add another half inch of insulation board. And when we're done with that and everything is leveled out, we spray foam all the edges and then shave down the spray foam. We do this to hold everything in place, but you also stop any squeaking from the insulation board moving. And then uh, this half inch plywood we use for the flooring, we like to paint it with a, uh, a primer, but it's a mildew and mold resistant primer. Um, I've actually uh, domino joined each one of these uh, flooring pieces. So this is basically one piece of wood after we get done with it. And then we, we screw that down and then you have your floor. One of the first things we like to build on the inside is the headliner shelf. Uh, instead of the standard kind of just straight shelf, we like to build a front to it. Uh, there's two reasons. One, we just like to conceal everything and there will be a door on here that you can open up and close. But it, you know, hide everything away, your window coverings or whatever. But the second reason is the support. So we have a board here where we connect these two. And behind here, I have some furring strips that are rib nutted to the van. 
and then I screw this face into that. So it's super solid. So it's not going anywhere. Helps support the bottom, keeps the weight up. So uh, yeah, really like it. So one of the more complicated things to build is the, uh, the bathroom, the shower. We first saw this technique being used by custom crafted vans and have adapted it to fit our builds. Uh, we use these metal studs. We really like them. They're easy to work with. Um, they're lightweight and uh, I always feel better that if there was a leak or something, it's metal, it's not wood, it's not gonna, you know, rot. Uh, we're still using the uh, extended shower pan. Uh, these are 24 by 40 inch, just so you get a little more room. I mean, if you're gonna have a bathroom, you might as well be somewhat comfortable in it. Uh, if I was gonna give a recommendation to first time van builders building a bathroom, uh, at least with the Ford Transit, don't build them up at the front. Uh, build them a little more towards the middle if you can design it that way. We like them up here with our design, but uh, it's a little more complicated. The walls come in uh, in the front and about the halfway point, the ceiling really drops down. So you have to factor all that in and you know it can, it can get complicated. Um, but with these metal studs, they're easy to work with. And on each of them, I cut like a little tongue, an extra two inches and fold that in. So that gets screwed in to every one of these is screwed into the wood up top. I just wanted to show you these uh, boxes we built for the tire wells. I don't think you're gonna see these. They'll be behind the cabinets and stuff. But what we did was we um, put kill mat for sound deadening around the tire well, and then we insulated it. And then we uh, built these boxes um, to put on top and then attach to the uh, floor underneath. Show y'all how we uh, attached our furring strips and how we kind of built support for the uh, bed frame or the, actually the floor that we're building uh, out of 8020. So initially what we do is we put a couple of rib nuts in here to support the furring strip and then we measure out and add a third one here that we're going to bolt in the 8020 that's going to come across here. So you would attach that, put this up. So this is what we ended up with. We have a furring strip that is attached in two places with bolts into rib nuts. In front of that, we put a support furring strip for the 8020. And then we have the plumbing wall where we're going to attach all our plumbing as added support under that. So once we do that, then we'll build the frame and we'll just drop it here. And then you can already see that it's being supported by the wood underneath. But then we'll go ahead and bolt it through uh, the rib nuts in the back for extra support. So I just want to talk a second about rib nuts. Um, so far, everything we've screwed into this van has a rib nut uh, instead of a self-tapping screw. Um, there's nothing wrong with self-tapping screws, but for us, um, when you install a rib nut, I can kind of show you here that when you install a rib nut, you have all this space for your bolt to grab a hold to hold of. But if you use a self-tapping screw, you only have the, the thickness of the metal that it's gonna grab a hold of. So I just feel like over time, you put in the rib nut, you have a bolt, you have all this way to thread it, it's gonna have a better grip. So we do that and then we add a little marine adhesive behind it. And these things are solid, they're not going anywhere and they'll last forever. I wanna show you uh, how we uh, attach a rib nut in the van. So to make a hole, we're gonna add one here. You just need some painter's tape. Uh, you just need a, a drill bit that's going to go through metal. And we have our uh, step drill bit. So we put a little tape where we want to stop. And then we'll drill a hole through that till we get to there. Um, kind of a trick I do is I have two different size rib nuts. So if I'm making one, the smaller one, and I accidentally make the hole a little too big, I can just add that other rib nut and you know move forward. So at first, I, I put a few uh, strips of painter tape together. And I get from behind and kind of just like go to the sides and underneath where I'm going to drill so it'll catch all the metal shrapnel that's kind of falling down. So we're going to go right there and then on the front I just add a piece underneath maybe do a little curve to catch all the flying metal shards. So then we're just going to take our drill bit and we're just going to drill a pilot hole through the metal. So now we're going to use our step bit. We just find the pilot hole and then So 
So after I do the step fit, just to test uh, if it's the right size, I get a rib nut, goes right in. So I'll pull that out. And one other thing I forgot, a tool that I like to use is a deburring tool. So it gets all, cleans out all the edges, anything from behind that'll be sticking out. You do that. And then you can see when you peel this off, how much metal came out of there and even more from the back. So we're just careful to like pull this off and putting this tape up, you save all that from flying around in the van. So now that we have this, what we'll do is we'll get some Rust-Oleum paint and we'll paint that and let it dry. And I'll show you how over here is one I made earlier. It's already been painted with Rust-Oleum and I'll show you how we attach a rib nut. So what we do is we get our rib nut tool and we place the rib nut on. It's pretty simple to use. You kind of put it up, put it straight into it, and then you just squeeze, clamp down, and then you hold it, and then to release it, you unscrew from the rib nut. And you can see right there, it's in there solid. That one's good to go. So once you have your rib nuts attached, you're going to want to attach your furring strip. And what you have to do is you have to line up the whole of the furring strip to this so you could bolt it in. So a trick we use is we get a little bit of lipstick, put it around the edges, and we'll wipe this off after we're done. Get it around the edges. And then you line up where you want your furring strip and you press it down. I usually give a little extra tap to get it going and then you can see that we're just going to get the middle of the hole there. So now to drill the holes in our furring strip, now that we have our lipstick outline of the rib nuts, what we're going to do is we're just going to get drill a pilot hole. So to find the center, and line it up, drill your pilot hole and now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and since we want to countersink the bolt, we're going to use a paddle bit and I put some uh, painters tape on it to mark the depth of where we want to go. So we find our pilot hole. And then I'll just go ahead and test that that depth will work. Yep. So the last thing we need to do is we need to drill the center hole a little bigger so it'll fit the bolt. So we just line that up, just make a clean hole, and then we'll just take our washer and bolt, put it in, another one. So now that we've made our holes and put our bolts through, uh, normally I would add some uh, thread lock to here, but since I'm not going to keep this up for now, uh, just to show you all. So you just line them up, tighten them down. And that was the purpose of the lipstick is to make sure that we line this up perfectly so these would go in no problem. And you can see like when you do these rib nuts and two bolts in each furring strip, it creates a really solid kind of base. So now we can put up our siding or cabinets or whatever, but you could see it's like solid. So for our furring strips, we use uh, on the sides here, you, we just use common board, three quarter inch common board. Um, and what I like to do is you can see, is I like to round, um, this isn't necessary, but I like to round the edges of each of these. So there's not a sharp corner because you're gonna be running wires everywhere around here. And even though we have like these marine grade wire that are kind of double insulated, and we will also be using these tie downs to secure the wires behind the wall. But in case any of them become loose, I feel better having the rounded edges on the furring strips. To know that it's not going to be like rubbing, you know, with all your driving stuff against a corner. Um, so we have common board for most of it. Uh, right here where there's going to be the, uh, the upper cabinets, I, use, I like to use uh, poplar. 
it's a harder wood to screw into. So the upper cabinets will screw into here. And you, as you can tell, I mean, these things are solid. Uh, so that's reassuring. And then for the ceiling, uh, everything is rib nutted here too, but we used half inch ply just because it's a little more flexible for the curve. Another thing we added is when you put in this little pill window, um, this is where the bench will be. So your, your back, you'll be resting here. Um, instead of just relying on these pocket holes uh, and this uh, furring strip to hold it, you know, of course we're gonna put shiplap across it. So it'd probably be sturdy enough. What we do is we build this little kind of brace and what it does is instead of like pushing it against the window where this is all pretty flexible, we uh, put it out here to go against this stud and we have it here where it goes against this double metal. So if you have someone big and clumsy like me that sits down and pushes up against it, you'll push against this and it'll also just go against those support to help stiffen up the wall. So for the insulation, we've used a 3M Thinsulate uh, we really like this product. It's fire and mold resistant. Easy to put up and uh, we haven't finished putting it up. We still have this area to do here, but you can see we, we've pushed it in to every kind of opening possible. Uh, even between here, we'll, we'll shove it down and between all the ribs, we, like we ran it through all the ribs to uh, just add whatever we could to the insulation. Another thing we've installed at the beginning of this build is a swivel seat. We used the Scopima. Uh, I believe that's the way you say it. Uh, we really like it. It's easy to install and actually the action of moving it is really smooth. So um, it may be a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely the one we're going to stick with from now on. So we've installed the Max Air Fan. Um, I like to install it by the shower just to suck out the steam and we're going to have our cooktop here too. So it's kind of important just to draw that air out. Uh, a new thing we started using is the DIY van uh, adapter. Uh, with, they're a company that makes these kind of like CNC molded uh, adapters for the roof. So when you apply the Max Air fan on top, it's a flat surface because it's curved underneath theirs. Um, so we did that. And also I like to build out this kind of wooden frame around the Max Air fan. So when you screw in through the top, it has an extra layer to grab a hold of. And you can see that we do this out of like half inch but I put these quarter inch strips on either side and just kind of sand the edges. So it creates a little bit of a curve to follow the roof line. The snugger it is, the better it is. So then when you screw that in and it compresses all down, it's a really tight fit. So in this build, uh, we've added an air conditioner, the Dometic uh, RTX 2000. Uh, also we've used the, uh, like with the Max Air fan, we use the DIY van adapter and they also have a foam ring. Um, really recommend that because instead of like placing this on kind of a curved uh, roof, when you put the adapter, then you just have a flat surface for it to rest on. And then you have to put these brackets in, torque them to the right pressure. And then um, we wanted to have a smooth uh, furring strip. So I kind of just routed out a couple of grooves where this metal is. And now we've put that up and we'll be able to put our ceiling across. And another thing to consider if you're doing it, um, installing one of these is these roofs are very thin so if we were to install it in the middle we'd really have to like watch out and brace it because it's just going to bounce because there's so much flex in the roof so in this last bay you have these two ribs that are solid so once you install it there, there's going to be no moving or no vibrations at all so when cutting out the hole for the air conditioner and the max air fan you can take your DIY van adapter and just trace an exact outline to cut. Then when you cut it, you have the perfect fit. If you use the DIY van foam ring with the adapter, I would suggest attaching those two together first before you attach the adapter to the roof, just because they are attached with 3M90 spray and it will be a lot easier to get them lined up perfectly working on a table instead of the roof. We attach these adapters with 3M window weld. When using this, I always cut the tip with a little triangle so when you apply it, the bead will be a little higher, so you'll be sure to have a complete seal. I apply three lines of the window weld, never breaking the line. It's just one solid line. After you put the adapter on, I add a little bit of window weld around the edge, smooth it out, and put a little weight on top and leave it overnight. After that's done, we add some Dicor lap sealant, and then we use a little 
RTV silicone to attach the foam ring to the air conditioner. We do the same thing for the Max Air fan. Add some butyl tape to the ring and then clamp it so it's holding the inside ring as well. Screw it down, add some Dicor lap sealant, and install the Max Air fan. And here's what you end up with. All right, just want to run through the plumbing that we've done so far. Uh, this is a 30 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, this is where the water will come in through the gravity fill. And then you'll be pulling water through the bottom here through this nylon braided hose. Uh, it'll head up to the water pump. After the water pump, it'll go to the accumulator, which basically just balances out the water so it doesn't pulsate when you're using it. And then the water will split in kind of three directions. Um, one, it'll go to the shower or the sink is cold water. Uh, it'll go to the outdoor shower sprayer here. And the third way, it'll go to the water heater. Now this is a Bosch 2.5 gallon water heater. So once it heats up, it'll feed it to the shower and the sink and you'll have hot water there. A couple of things about the uh, fresh water tank. Um, it's made by Icon, I believe. And we spoke with them and they really stressed the importance of having really good support on the sides. So it doesn't expand and contract so much. So we went ahead and built these little uh, half inch plywood uh, sides, strap those in just to contain the tank more. And then we have a water gauge, which will have a reader installed in one of the upper cabinets. So you always know how much fresh water that you have left. One of the things that's always talked about is winterizing one of these vans. Um, so for us, you know, you could drain the fresh water tank. We have a hose that goes out through the bottom. So you could empty that out. You could turn on the water pump which will flush out all the lines. You know, you just turn on the uh, faucet at the sink or the shower, flush out all the lines. But uh, the issue's always been a Bosch water heater uh, to get all the water out of there. Uh, when you flush out the lines, it's not gonna pull everything out. There's still gonna be like a gallon left. Um, I believe the way it's designed is the uh, cold intake goes further down than the uh, hot water. So you're gonna have some resting there. Uh, I know, People use air compressors. I still think that leaves a little bit on the bottom. So we talked to Bosch and they say there's only two ways to kind of empty it out. Either you take it out, turn it upside down and drain it that way, which you're not going to do when it's in a van, or you siphon it out. So we tried a couple things. Um, we actually put a 1.2 gallons per minute and then eventually like a 3 gallons per minute motor trying to pull it out but it's just not strong enough to pull it through the pipe. So the solution we came up with is this fixture here that has a cap that you can screw down. So when you're ready to empty out the water, you just unscrew this cap. Obviously it'll be tighter, have plumber's tape and everything, so you'll need a wrench, but you'll just take this off and then you'll grab a siphon. We have ours here. You just feed the hose down towards the bottom and then you just pull the water out. You, so you do this for a few times and you'll have an empty tank. And that kind of like is a pretty easy way to empty out the tank without taking it out or using compressed air. You can just siphon it out. And then you'll, uh, all you have to do is just put the cap back on and you're good to go. One of the things we always think about during one of these builds is if something were to go wrong and break, would you have access to fix it? Um, with the plumbing here, th this is the floor, this is the garage. On top of here will be a bench. There'll be a couple sections of the bottom of the bench where you'll be able to remove it and uh, take a look at the plumbing or work on it in, if necessary. But what we wanted is if something catastrophic were to happen, say to the uh, freshwater tank or the water heater, we wanted the ability to remove those. I don't ever see that happening, but if there's a possibility, we just want to be prepared for that. So what we did is this will be screwed in, but you'll be able to unscrew this section of wall. You'll be able to take this off, unscrew this kind of support beam, and then you'll have access to the water tank or the water heater to remove it. Like I said, I don't see there uh, being any issues with that, but if there ever is, you have a way to take care of it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section. And if you're interested in this van or us potentially building out your van, you can reach us at livablevans.com. There'll be a link in the description below.